know? So, um, well, let's just start with prayer, okay? Amen. So, Lord, we just thank you, God, for this night. We thank you for um, your presence here with us tonight. We thank you most of all for Jesus, Father. Lord, and we just ask, Lord, uh, uh, that he would be lifted up tonight, Lord, in every word, in every thought, in every uh, action, Lord, that Jesus would be high and lifted up, Lord, and his glory would fill the temple, Lord. We just give you ourselves, Lord. We thank you for the blood that we're washed by the precious blood of the Lamb, Lord. We ask tonight that you would wash us by the washing of the water of the Word, Lord. Renew us, Lord, in the spirit of our mind, Lord, that we might talk like Jesus talked, walk like Jesus walked, Lord, and act like He acted, Lord, and, uh, and acts, God. And so we thank you, Lord, and I just give you my heart, Lord. Just touch my lips with that little living coal from the altar of God. Cleanse me, wash me, fill me, Lord, in every thought and every action, Lord. And I pray the same for each and every one of us, Lord. And just give you my everything that I am and everything that I have. Holy Spirit, just ask that you would take control, Lord, and, and just lift up Jesus and point to him. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, um, exciting things are going on, as uh, as uh, Brock was saying, and I'm more thrilled about life than, uh, than I ever have been before. Uh, just more thrilled about uh, God and ministry and everything than, than ever before. It's just uh, amazing what God is doing uh, with a little broke vessel, broken vessel like me, you know. I mean, without Him, I, I probably I couldn't find my way out of a paper sack. But, but with Him, man, all things are possible to Him who believes. Amen. So I'm going to just start this off with uh, this right here just to say you know, that uh, Jesus, or it's written in 2 Chronicles 20, 17. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. <laughs> Thank God for that. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. Amen. I mean, if it wasn't for this, we'd be sunk, friends. I would be sunk. But I tell you, God is thrilling me because even though I try to put things together and things don't come together, God puts them together, you know? Amen. And uh, brings, opens doors that no man shuts and shuts doors that no man opens. And Though we try as we might, you know, without the Lord, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. And so I'm seeing God uh, do wondrous things, you know, uh, just surprise me with, with His goodness. And uh, so I will just uh, say, first of all, and... Uh, well, I, I did want to read, I, I think, this one other scripture along with that, okay? Um, Romans 10, 10. With the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You know? He sent his word and healed them of all their destructions. You know, is what the scripture says. And, and uh, what he's washing us by the washing of the water of the word, renewing of our mind. And so over in Mozambique, you know, right now what's going on is uh, we, every single day, we uh, gather together. Uh, I'll show you quickly a, a picture of some of my sons in the faith. Some of them, I wasn't able to get to, uh, to all of them. I won't show you them. But uh, this paper is over there. You can see there's nine of them that I grabbed before I left. I wasn't able to get them all. But these are nine of our uh, older young men uh, and adults. And uh, we gather daily to, to seek God, to worship Him, and uh, to pray together and to go out and evangelize. So 
uh, Monday through Saturday, every day, I'm, I'm up, every day of the week, I'm up at like 3, 4 in the morning, reading, just bathing myself in, in the Word of God and writing down what He says, and then my sons come at 6, 6.30, we start worshiping God and praying and uh, uh, preaching the Word of God. It's a daily discipleship time that we have, and then we go out and evangelize. Now, we also have orphan children. Let me get the picture of them real quick so you can see. Now, this is not all of them. We take care of 22, but I, I have a picture here of, of some of them. I was just unable to print out any more um, before I came. But uh, So, we, uh, I, I just want to uh, say that years ago, a man gave me a vision. And, and this is going to bring us back around to what I said. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You will not need to fight. The Lord is with you, you know. And so years ago, I had this vision. Uh, I saw myself, it, it was 15, probably 16 years ago. I was uh, driving through Africa. I was on a ship called the Spirit Ship. And uh, uh, we had just gotten off the ship for a while. We were uh, driving through Africa. We carried food and clothes and medicine and preached the gospel to poor countries. And as I was driving, I saw myself in this little mud house uh, in the middle of Africa, an African village. And I saw I had a garden. And uh, I would get up every morning at 3, you know, read, worship, pray, write down what God was saying to me. And then I would go out and uh, preach the gospel and pray for people and, uh, you know, have this garden. And so I remember years ago when I saw that vision, I, I didn't know what it meant. I, I know I was excited about it because the Lord had me aboard that ship uh, for a year and a half. And this is what he told me, Michael, don't. Uh, waste your time. Redeem the time for the times are evil. Go to bed early. Get up early. So I, I've got a river of life I want to pour into you. Don't stay out playing cards and watching TV and talking about nothing. Go to bed early. Devour my word. Let me fill you with, with tr the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So you have something good and encouraging to say to people. And so uh, when you go out. So I did that for a year and a half. I don't know how many times I read the Bible through and through. And God just lifted me up to see uh, the world from His perspective. Uh, from, from the heavens even. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I can tell you that uh, during that time uh, that I was on the ship and doing this, there was a couple of months that... Uh, I would look forward to going to bed because something was happening in the middle of the night. I don't know what it was to this day, but I tell you it's as real as standing here talking to you. In the middle of the night, I would find myself floating up out of that ship. I don't understand it. I don't know whether in the body or out of the body. I don't know. All I know is that as I bathed myself in the Word of God and in the presence of God, God was taking me up, you know, into the heavenly places every night. And I would fly. I, I could I look down on the earth and I could feel the wind uh, blowing. I could, if I thought, go to the right or go to the left. I, that's where I would go. If I became afraid, I would fall, you know. And uh, so... God was just showing me during that time that you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, you know? Just like the scripture says, you know, now, it's not for the sweet by and by, it's now. We have the mind of Christ. That is by the promise of God, you know? And it's by faith that we receive it. But it's true. That's all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. So God was giving me a new heart and a new mind aboard that spirit ship. And uh, so I, you know, uh, was just thrilled back then just as I am now. But uh, God has brought me into a, a, a new season there. I'm now in that, uh, I'm in a house in Mozambique, Africa. You know, I get up every morning at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. I share, the, you know, seek God and I share the word of God and we go out and preach. 
preach, you know, have a little garden there. Just what God had shown me years ago, you know. And uh, uh, also another man had a vision about 16 years ago. He had this vision. He said when he saw me, he had never seen me before. He didn't know me. But he was a Mexican man and he saw me and he had this vision. He said, I saw a, a man walking from country to country, city to city, preaching the gospel and praying for people. And uh, in the center of the cities was this fountain. And uh, the fountain, as, as he watched, he saw a man go up a hill. And at the top of the hill, the, the mountain, uh, he was looking down on the city. There was a fountain and there were people, uh, children and people playing around that fountain. And so when, as he watched, seven holes opened up in the heavens and light came down from the heavens into that fountain and it began to bubble over onto the streets of the city and uh, it, it, you know, all the children and all the people and I tell you friends this is getting to that place the, the place back to the place stand still and want to see the salvation of the Lord you will not have to fight I tell you that right now uh, that is happening I, I I wasn't seeking it. I wasn't, you know, I was just uh, seeking God and, and having a prayer meeting, you know, on a, this tower, uh, abandoned military tower. And all of a sudden, it, I mean, it was two or three people. And all of a sudden, people start walking that way out of the city uh, and they, all along the beach, and they came to that tower. Muslim people, they just kept coming. Every day they would come. And they would say, well, we had a dream or a vision to come out in that direction. And we saw you on the tower, so we came. And they stayed. They repented. They received Christ. They were baptized out in the Indian Ocean. And most of them have stayed. Some have not, of course, but most of them have stayed. And, and so, uh, you know, God just brought this together. He, he said in the scripture that I, I, I will bring your sons to you from afar, from the north, the south, the east, and the west, from afar, and your heart will swell with joy within you as you see them coming. And I tell you, I have no greater joy than to see my sons walk in truth, as the apostle John said. It's a joy to uh, uh, uns unspeakable to, 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 to be able to seek God together with sons in the faith and, and pour out what, what he's giving us uh, onto each other and onto the world around us. And so I, uh, I'm thrilled God brought us to this house and we looked for a month and a half this, on this last trip for the right house. I didn't know which one we were frustrated because we couldn't really find a property that, that looked right, that felt right, that we were at peace with. And so all of a sudden, one day, we walked onto this property and uh, they said, we've seen you before. You came here years ago. A couple of years ago, you came here preaching the gospel and praying for us. And uh, they said, the next time you set foot on this property, it will be yours. And I knew when we walked on that property, a peace settled into all of us, and we began to confess it with our mouths, you know? And then they said this, and, and so we went back to declare it to the children. This is what God is doing. He's finally giving us a piece of property here, you know? And they were all excited because they were looking forward to getting out of that rental house that we uh, were renting to take care of them. And so uh, time went on, a week or so, and uh, we thought everything's going smooth, going smooth. Then all of a sudden, a wrench got thrown in the spokes. The family of the people that own the property said, you know, no, no, don't sell it to them. And so they told us, we're not going to sell it to you for any price or anybody. We're not going to sell it for, to anybody for any price. So we went to praying and fasting and proclaiming. You know, because we didn't want to go back to looking for another piece of property and spend another two months looking for a piece of property. So we started confessing with our mouth, you know, out, you know, uh, like, like it said, with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth uh, confession is made unto salvation, you know, and uh, faith calls those things which are not as though they are. And God, as he was building us up, 
in the faith daily. We were proclaiming every place which the soul of our foot treads, you have given it to us. You know, like you'd send to Joshua. And so a week passed, and we went back, we talked to them, and they said, okay, we'll sell it to you. So we bought the property, and we started building on the property. Uh, half of the house was already built, uh, but we needed to finish it. Nobody could live in it. And then we needed to build another house. So we started building. And a month into this building uh, process, we uh, uh, found the city digging, uh, down, digging down toward our house. And we asked, what's going on? What are you guys doing? Oh, we're bringing water down into this village, this neighborhood. You know, they had never had water. In all the years that that city had been there, they had never had water until we got here. And one of my sons in the faith, he's our worship leader. He's been with me for eight years. He said, when we came, the Holy Spirit came to this neighborhood. The water, you know, is here. Christ, you know, being coming forth. And so, lo, lo and behold, uh, as they worked, we saw what they were doing. And they started building a fountain right out in front of our house. So here's, here's my uh, porch. My front porch is right here. Uh, and out there, like right where that tree is, there's a mango tree that covers almost the entire yard, you know, with shade. And then out in front of that, we built a wall that goes out. And there's a street on the other side of the wall. And in, right in the middle of that street is where they put the fountain. So we're looking at the fountain every day. I preach from my front porch. This is... A, uh, our yard is our church under the mango tree. You know, and every single day we worship and we pray and we preach the word of God uh, there. And everybody that passes by on that street, everybody that plays at that fountain, because they all have to come to the fountain for the water, you know. And so they get not only, uh, you know, regular water, they get living water, you know, every day. <laughs> So, I tell you, uh, as we have sought God diligently, daily, uh, daily we gather to break bread and share in the apostles' doctrine. Daily, we're doing this every single day. And so, uh, it, I just, we've seen His righteousness, His peace, and His joy increase in our hearts on an exponential basis. I mean, everywhere we go, these guys that were thieves, that were robbers, these guys that didn't have anything good to say, or it, we're, are starting to, to, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so I'm seeing them, the high praises of God, come forth off of their lips. And uh, we're, wherever we go, uh, in our cars, uh, these guys uh, start singing. We just, we don't talk even. My, well, we do sometimes, but we a lot of times break out in just singing and worshiping God just because of the joy unspeakable and full of glory that we're experiencing over there. And so one day in particular, as I was preaching here on, on the front porch, well, I hadn't even started preaching. We were worshiping and praying, and uh, all of a sudden, I don't know how to describe it, to describe it, except to say it was like a sound was released from heaven in our midst. And uh, the Lord took me to uh, the sound at the day of Pentecost when they were gathered together with one accord in the upper room after daily breaking bread and sharing in the apostles' doctrine. And the on that day of Pentecost, the sound as of a rushing mighty wind came in and filled the house and they went out prophesying and, uh, uh, you know, they turned the world upside down, you know, and it, until it was said that uh, uh, those who have turned the world upside down have come here too. And I tell you, he is turning our world upside down, friends. We are not of this world. We are citizens of heaven, members of the household of God, you know, ambassadors of the government of God on earth. That's who you are. I don't care what the world has told you. The truth is you are members of his household. 
citizens of heaven, ambassadors of his government on earth. You are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The government is on his shoulders. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall rest on his shoulders. Jesus said when he died when on the cross, he said, it is finished. And it is finished. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The government is on his shoulders. You understand? All the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. He's just trying to get us to believe it, to receive it by faith, to lay hold of that for which he died to give us. It's by faith that we receive it. You understand? And that faith diligently seeks God. You know, one of my favorite scriptures is in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 5. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that God is and is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Friends, are we diligently seeking God? Faith diligently seeks God. You know, we should, it's written that we should rest our hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to us at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Are we seeking Him to be, uh, for Him to be revealed? He said, uh, anyone who keeps my word, uh, the Father will love Him, I will love Him. We will come and make our home with Him, and I will manifest myself to Him. You understand? Are we diligently seeking Him? Are we keeping, what is His word? This is His commandment, that you would believe in the one whom He sent, and love one another. Friends, are we believing with all of our heart? Or are we being like Noah, the, the people in the days of Noah, when uh, they were everyone was working and everyone was marrying and giving in marriage uh, until the day that the flood came and then they were carried away to destruction? You understand? Uh, Noah was building an ark. He was laboring, uh, building that ark. Uh, Seeking God, the presence, the ark of the Lord, the ark of the covenant of God in us. God wants to transform us into his image, into his likeness. Renew our minds by the washing of the water of the word until we are in the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. You understand? He sent apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, you know, for the equipping of the saints, for the edifying of the saints, for the building up of the body of Christ until they are in the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. Do you understand? Yes. Are we longing? Are we longing for this? Let me, let me go to another scripture here, and then I'll get back to the house there. Look, 2 Corinthians 5, I believe it is. I believe it's 2 Corinthians 5, 4. It says, For we who are in this tent grow, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality might, may be swallowed up, by life. You understand? We long, we groan to be clothed in Christ. You know, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. I am telling you, friends, that we are experiencing a portion of this in Mozambique as we have yearned, as we have groaned, as we have given ourselves to prayer and the breaking of the uh, of bread and the uh, the word, you know, the sharing in the apostles' doctrine together. God has let us taste a little bit of what Enoch tasted. You know, when he was taken without seeing death because he pleased God. And without faith, it's impossible to please him. Do you, do you understand? He was taken without seeing death. Jesus himself said that if anyone keeps my word, he shall never taste death. If anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. And
And we're not talking about just this, friends. We are, we, by the blood of Jesus, by what he's done, we have the victory. This is the victory which has overcome the world. Our faith in the Son of God. We can walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh. We can walk in perfect harmony with the living God. We can walk in His righteousness, peace, and joy every minute of every second of every day. That's our inheritance. And I get so angry, you know, with that, that you know, with the devil. I get so angry that, that you know, sometimes he comes in and robs that from people. And I so long to see that restored in, in people's hearts, in men's hearts. You know, I, I, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing over there. And I have no greater joy than to see my sons walk in truth, to see them, when, uh, you know, reject the lies, you know, reject all the lies, you know, and, and receive only uh, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Faith, encouragement. If anything ever speaks to us that's not encouragement, that's not faith, it's not God. We must stand firm and strong in Him as Jesus did. And, and you know, and you know, when the devil came to Him, uh, Jesus just opened up the Word and said, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, like David when he slung that stone and he hit Goliath and knocked him out. That word of God, you know, we God wants us to be strong in, in the Lord and in the power of his mind, strong in the faith, strong in the spirit. You, you understand? Uh, so uh, we have seen over there on, on that particular day when that sound from heaven was released. I don't know how to describe it, but everybody in the streets, all the children, all the workers, all the people passing by stopped what they were doing. The workers stopped. The children stopped playing. The people stopped walking. And they gathered at the gate, holding on to the gate, looking in. Many of them came in. We were dancing. You know, African people love to dance. We were dancing and worshiping, and the Spirit of the Lord filled that place. It was like warfare dance that we were doing, pro prophesying and proclaiming over that city uh, the life of God. Friends, I want to say that we got to experience a little slice of heaven on earth. How many know it's not about religion? It's not about tradition. It's not about organization, all this stuff. It's about a living, vibrant relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's about the city of God, the government of God. Friends, I want to tell you, I, hey, I love America, but I want to tell you there's something better than America. And we are strangers here, sojourners, pilgrims. We are citizens of heaven, members of God's household. Do you understand that? The city of God that, that is, surrounds us in Hebrews 12 says you have come to Mount Zion. Hebrews 12, chapter 22. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Abel. We have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God. We are surrounded, as it says here, uh, Hebrews 12, verse 1. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight of sin which so easily ensnares us that we may run with endurance the race that is set before us. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed, friends. If we will pursue Him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, He will send His Word and heal us of all our destructions. Do you believe that? Amen. I believe it. And I experienced part of it. And I want to experience more and more and more. All of it. We have seen this and we got it. That on that day that that sound was released from heaven. 
took me back to that vision where the man had, he saw seven holes open up in the heavens and light coming down out of the holes into the fountain. And the fountain began to go over onto the streets of the city, onto all the children and the people. And that is what is happening over there now. And that on that particular day just became just seared into my heart like, yes, God, you know, God is alive. Jesus is alive forevermore. You know, <laughs> he's the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. It's in, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds forth out of the mouth of God. Jesus told us, do not labor for that food which perishes, but labor for the food which endures to everlasting life. So we've given ourselves. It's been in my heart for many years uh, since I've been saved. I've been saved, I guess, 17, 18 years, I think. It's been in my heart many years uh, to be, that I, like the disciples said, you know, the apostles said, uh, it is not good that we should wait on tables. Let us, you know, uh, devote ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the Word and choose seven men full of faith and the Holy Spirit to do, to wait on tables. I, I've been longing to do this for all my life, and God has enabled me now there in Mozambique, Africa, to devote myself to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. And it's a thrill, the thrill of a lifetime to be there. The thrill, uh, like no other, to, to, to be uh, able to do this and see my sons uh, washed by the washing of the water of the Word until heaviness. God, remember he said, he will give us a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, beauty for ashes, and I'm getting to see this in their lives. We're getting to see uh, the city. I mean, it, it's becoming more of a reality to me, the city of God, than, 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 than America, than Mozambique, than this world system. Friends, there is a king. The kingdom is here and now. It's within us. It's amongst us. That since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence. But the violent take it by force. The force of faith, my friends, diligently pursuing God. Remember Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a short man. He couldn't see Jesus. All the crowd of people all around him. He couldn't see Jesus. So he said, I'm going to go find He ran ahead of the crowd and he found the tree to see Jesus. You know, he decided in his heart, Jesus is passing by. I'm not going to let him pass me by. I've got to see him. Where's our tree, friends? What are we doing? We've got to run ahead of the crowd. We're like Zacchaeus, men of short stature. Unless we pursue him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Unless we run ahead of the crowd. Unless we uh, go contrary uh, uh, to the ways of this world. You know, how, how many of you know that uh, our ways are not his ways? Our thoughts are not his thoughts. And this world is going in one direction, as your pastor said the other day. But Jesus is going in the other he wants to come in and turn our world upside down. New creations. We are new creations in Christ Jesus. The uh, old things have passed away. The old, all things have been made brand new. You understand? God wants to do this in us. Yes. So over there we're seeing. Thank you very much. That hit the spot. Over there we are. It's becoming more and more of a reality. Who we are in Christ. Who He is in us. That the things of heaven are more real than the things of this earth. These things are passing away. All of this that we're seeing. Passing away. You're not going to carry anything with you. Only Jesus. And relationships. You, know, you see. He's the pearl of grace. So, we're seeing he's stirring our hearts, you know, as 
or on that day that uh, on that day that that sound came in, God took me not only to that vision, but He took me to uh, the Scripture. You know, the vision of the seven holes, light coming down. He took me to the Scripture, Jacob's ladder. Jacob was running from his brother, and he fell asleep on a rock in the wilderness. And he dreamed a dream that uh, there was a ladder extending from heaven to that rock. And the Lord was at the right, was at the, uh, at the top of the ladder. Angels ascending and descending upon that ladder. You know, and ministering spirits sent to minister uh, to those who shall inherit salvation. That's what it was. And he was seeing that ladder and he woke up and he said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God and the gate of heaven. And I did not know it. How many of us know it, friends? We are the house of God. The gate of heaven is open over us. Angels ascending and descending. Ministering spirits sent to minister to those who shall inherit salvation. You understand? Jesus at the right hand of the Father. God, we're see, we're, we are seeing it over there. And I want to encourage you. Man, I want to see it. I just want to see this thing being like an explosion in the earth. I want to see his kingdom established. And as we're seeing it over there, I want it to increase and increase and increase. So I, I covet your prayers. I covet your prayers. I want to uh, uh, see, I, I want to labor with Jesus in men's hearts. Until all, until the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ forever. In truth, you know, it, it already is. He's just trying to get us to see it, to believe it, to lay hold of it by faith, to walk in our inheritance. You are sons of God. You are soldiers in the army of the living God. He is with you. He says, any soldier who would, wants to uh, please the one who has enlisted him as a soldier will not entangle himself with the affairs of this life. Then he may please the one who enlisted him as a soldier. So I don't know what you're entangled with, friend, but get rid of it. <laughs> Whatever entangles you, ask the Lord to help you. Help me, God. I want to be a soldier in the army of the Lord. I want to uh, know the truth. The truth shall set me free. I want to. I want to be a light that shines in the darkness in the earth. And um, so, gosh, I don't know how much time I have here. I could probably go on forever, but I don't want to be careful. Um, <laughs> you good? Are we called to be living sacrifices? 
Isn't that what we're called to be? Holy, acceptable, and pleasing in His sight. Didn't Jesus say, anyone who seeks to save his life will lose it, but he who loses his life for my name's sake shall find it? Isn't that what he said? Amen. Oh, man. I can hardly wait to get back over to Mozambique. I love what I'm doing over there. I love my sons in the faith. I love what God is doing. Man truly shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds forth out of the mouth of God. So whatever he said to you, those are the wisest words that were ever spoken, I believe, in heaven or on earth. What Mary, the mother of Jesus, said at the wedding feast when they ran out of wine, whatever he said, do it. So whatever he's saying to you, do it. Do it. We've got a banqueting table set before us. A banqueting table, a feast, a, 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 the, a wedding feast set before us, a table prepared for us in the middle of our enemies. But are we saying, oh, no, 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 no. I, I, just, bought a, I, I just bought a field. I just bought a, a business. I just bought an ox. Uh, I just married a wife. Please have the excuse. Friends, this is what sets you free. Not, not the book. He's the living word. Alive, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It's by his word that we live. Hearing his word. Giving ourselves to his word. You know, Jesus said, said to the uh, people, at, at, to the disciples when he was at the well, uh, you know, talking to this woman, they came, they had been eating in town, they said, Master, aren't you hungry? Can't we give you something to eat? You know, you've not eaten all day long. And he said, I have food you know not of. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and finish his work. I just want to testify, friends, there is no other way. There is no other life. That Jesus said to the disciples, do you want to leave me too? When, when, when everybody left him, because he said, you must eat my flesh, you must drink my blood. Everybody left. And he turned to his disciples, the apostles, and said, do you want to leave me too? And Peter said, there's nowhere else to go, Lord. You alone have the words of life. It is true. It is true. Seek him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And pray for me over there. I want to see this thing increase. I want to see my sons walking in the righteousness of faith. Faith. <laughs> faith in the Son of God. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's our inheritance. I get angry when I see uh, somebody not walking in righteousness, peace, and joy. I don't get angry at them. I don't get angry at the church. But I'm angry at the devil, you know. Jesus came to destroy the works of darkness. And if, if he lives in us, he's going to be destroying the works of darkness. He went in to the temple. Remember, he went into the temple. And he saw the people selling things and doing things in the temple. And he made a whip of cords and said, get these things out of here. It is written, my father's house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. But you have made it a den of thieves. Do you know what the, I believe the Lord revealed to me about the den of thieves? It's when we haven't sought the Lord. We've been busy about so many other things. And so something is going to fill your heart. You were made at, for God to fill your heart. The Word of God incarnate to live in you. The life of Jesus, to live in us. You know, and if, we, if we're so busy, Martha, Martha, so busy about many things, so many things, when only one thing is necessary, and your sister Mary has chosen a better thing, to sit at my feet, you know? So I want to encourage you, you know, be busy about seeking the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Otherwise, the enemy can come in, you know? The thief can come in with lies. If we're not full of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, other things can come in and steal our righteousness, peace, and joy. You know? So, anyway, I want to just uh, give you guys time, if you have any questions um, for me, just to talk about 
uh, my sons in the faith or the ministry over there or whatever you guys would like to talk about or comment on what I said tonight. They are. They, they receive. They do. Those people, when we were having a prayer meeting on the tower uh, a, over about a year and a half ago, they walked an hour and a half just to get there. And an hour and a half just to get back. Walking every day. Every day. And I, I tell you, the Spirit of the Lord has poured down uh, all on that tower too, you know, just pour it down upon us in so many ways. I, it's just incredible to walk with Jesus. It's incredible. I, I, I can tell you some stories, and you know, if you want to hear some stories, I can tell you a couple, you know. Yeah. Well, A friend of mine, he was he was a part of the one of the churches in town. He was a leader in one of the churches. He was a good friend of mine. Really, he was. I don't know what happened, but somehow he got involved in witchcraft and he became demon possessed. I mean, demon possessed. I've never seen anything like it in all my life. Never. But, but I see a lot of similar things over in Mozambique. But uh, he. He would go around lighting fires to people's houses or hitting people or biting people or scratching people or whatever. So his family decided the only thing we can do is carve out a tree trunk and put his feet in it and make him lie on the ground all the time. And he wouldn't wear clothes either. He'd rip off all his clothes and just go around naked, you know, doing all these things. And uh, so... Uh, he was he had been in this tree trunk for some time just lying on the ground under a tree in his backyard all day and night mosquitoes, rain didn't matter you know, day and night, naked because he wouldn't wear clothes you know? and so we decided we were going to fast and pray we took three days on the tower you know, uh, three days no eating, no drinking, worshiping God, praying, asking God to release him. So on that tower, as we marched around and danced and worshiped, one, on the final day, the Spirit of the Lord fell upon us. Everybody in unison, not planned, nothing. Everybody fell flat on their face in unison. And just in awe of the living God, in awe, see, just knowing that we are in the presence of angels. You know, we are in the presence of the living God, the saints, you know, surrounded by the city. And I, I knew, you know, it was time to go. So we loaded up. We went. It was an hour and a half, two hour drive to get there. Bumpy roads. My back was, I mean, just beaten silly by the time I got there. Two hours. Uh, I was in the back of a a uh, five-ton pickup truck uh, because that was the only way we could carry all 40 of my guys out there, you know? So my back was beating up against that uh, metal of the truck the whole time. So I was sore when we got there. But we got there and we started uh, to walk towards him. And uh, he was acting up, you know, something fierce. Uh, he had before... Before this day, I went to visit him, and uh, he threw, he picked up a cake of mud off of his house, because their houses are made out of mud, you know, most of them, because that's all they can afford. So he picked up this dry cake of mud, you know, a week or two before that, and he threw it as hard as he could, and he hit me in the gut. Man, it hurt, you know. He was lying down on the, on, in this tree trunk and did that. Um, but uh, so on this day, we after fasting and praying, we came and uh, he didn't recognize anybody on that day. Couldn't recognize you. The only way they could feed him is to put food in a paper sack or a plastic bag and throw it at him. Because he otherwise he would bite, kick, hit, he 
would tear the food, you know, and they'd try to bring it to him on a plate, forget it, he'd throw it, you know, and uh, so we got there and he didn't recognize anybody or anything. And uh, then we went to pray, we gathered in a group, and I I don't know, but in the middle of our praying and worshiping, it was like the sound as of a lion. I I can't really describe it except there was a roar, a holy roar that was released in the spirit. And we went over and we <clears throat> laid hands on him. He was subdued. You know, he hadn't been violent before. He was subdued. We laid hands on him. We prayed for him. He saw me and he said, is that Michael? Is that Michael Goodnight? You know, you know and, he, and he began to speak to me and remember you know, I asked him, do you, you remember me? He said, yeah, I don't remember you. you know. And so he sat up in his right mind and was talking to me, you know, talking uh, just like almost really like old times, you know. And um, so for about three or four weeks, uh, he was normal. Three or four weeks, he was normal, uh, you know. But they, they would never release him from the, the tree trunk. I, I don't know if it was because they wouldn't release him or I don't know what happened, but the, the, the devil came back in. The same spirit came back in and he's now under that tree again. But man, you know, yeah. hey, deliverance is with him. Deliverance is in uh, Zion. You know, man. Jesus will set you free. And uh, so we're going to we're going to be fasting and praying for him and going back. We're just believing that on someday as, as God released Nebuchadnezzar, he's going to release him also, you know? And so, yeah. <laughs> any, any other questions? Are most of the people Muslims? Yes. 90% Muslim. So, two years ago, they tried to kick us out of the country. One of the chief kingpin Muslims in the city who builds mosques, he's a rich man, he builds mosques and all kinds, buys off elections and all kinds of things. He got one of my emails by mistake because our people in the U.S. that sent out our emails forgot to take him out of the list. And uh, he got one of my emails and I was talking about, here we are, right in the center of this Muslim village in Mozambique, Africa, on this... Uh, abandoned military tower, uh, seeing the government of God established in the hearts of these men, women, and children. You know, righteousness, peace, and joy. And uh, so he got a hold of that letter and said, sent us a scathing email and phone calls. I'm outrageous. You know, this is outrageous. I'm, I'm uh, you know, angry about this. I'm going to go to the governor and get you kicked out of the country. So, he went to the governor, and they sent uh, 50 soldiers armed with machine guns to the tower, you know, to ask us, what is this that we're doing on this tower? Is this, is this sedition, or what is this? And maybe he said, is this sedition because I had talked about the government of God, you know? But you and I know the government I'm talking about, but maybe they didn't know, I don't know. But they tried to get us kicked out of the country. They tried to make them get our visas revoked, but they could not. <laughs> and so now, you know, we think the government has even given us property in southern Mozambique. You know, we went down there, told them we had a heart to help people, and the, the, God ordered our steps. How many know the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord? And we shall, we don't have, hey, you will not have to fight this battle. You know, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. So we have st stood still and seen the salvation of the Lord. He gave us property down in the south, and now he's given us this house in the north. And uh, all the people uh, passing by every day, these same Muslim people that wanted us out of the country, pass by every day, hear the gospel every day. They stopped us from praying on the tower, but they did not stop us from praying. You know, and and so and they even, the government even gave us property in the southern part, and we're we're excited. That's, that's some of the things I'm excited about. 
You know, I'm excited now. I've been discipling these guys for three years. Uh, and uh, I'm excited about releasing them. You know, I'm, I'm looking forward. I want to, uh, as the Lord uh, makes it available, uh, I'm going to uh, buy a piece of property as the Lord makes it. Uh, makes it possible, buy a piece of property, build a little church, and uh, have them just say, At freely you have received, freely give, and just release them to do that, and stand. I'm looking forward to sitting back as a dad, or a granddad, and watching my sons, and, and my grandsons in the faith, move forward in pursuing God, and seeing His kingdom established in their city. And uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And building in the South, too, I'm looking forward to that. Uh -huh. These people that, are, that are find salvation through your ministry, they, they were Muslims? Many of them. Not all of them, but most of them, I would say. Yeah. And it's a hard thing because they, you know, their families will keep them out. Yeah. They don't want to become a Christian. They don't want to become a Christian because they'll, they'll get kicked out. There's not much violence and not much threats on life there, but there was one time that one of them was threatened. And his <coughs> life was threatened. So, I don't know. Have you heard about using the word Islam as an acronym? means I sincerely love all the Muslims. I didn't know that. I never heard of that. A prayer for Muslims every Friday at the mosque here in town for a couple of years. So I learned that. Hey, I want to tell you another story, you know, a, a, just a praise report. And it happened on this last time that I was coming home. I was coming home. Uh, I was riding in the front of the plane. The Lord blessed me with a, a what do you call it, a business class. It, it, yeah, first class, business class. It, I, I fly on buddy passes, which is friends and family members of Delta Airlines. Uh, you get, I, and I pay like a thousand dollars for a round trip ticket to get to uh, part of Africa. That's not the whole trip, but that's part of Africa, you know. And so, anyway, I was on this uh, plane, and wh whoever has a money pass, if there's space available, uh, they get first class. So, anyway, I was sitting there, and I on this last trip, so full of faith in the Holy Spirit, just witnessing and telling people about what God is doing in Mozambique, you know? And this one man I sat by, I talked to him for almost the whole time. I never met the guy in my life, you know? But uh, it was a divine appointment. God set it up, you know? God just set it up. And, you know, like, during these financial difficult times, you know, I, I've, I've seen, you know, some of the support level drop off, you know, and, uh, uh, God knew that and and set me up right there at the right time, you know. And uh, as as much as we labor to, to get things done, uh, and you know, and as much as I've labored to get things done and to, to to move forward, it just God does it, you know. Just out of the blue, this man that I met one time uh, called, you know, called me back. Uh, three months later and wanted to contribute toward the work. So I, the, the, the biggest uh, donation I've ever received in, in my life, you know, came through for, for the work of the kingdom and just at the right time because we're trying to build, buy, you know, a new property, build a church, trying to build a, a church down in the south, you know, and, and uh, financial hard times have kind of hit, but God... Just, uh, he made a way, you know. I mean, it's not, a, it's not everything that, uh, that we need to do all that, but I just wanted to share a praise report that our God is faithful, and, you know, we stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He can do it. <laughs> he can do it. You know, we can't. I can't find my way out of a paper sack without Jesus, but... You know, as much as I labored in, in all of this, he just in one second, you know, one trip, you know, setting the right, the right person and one phone call. And so I'm able to go back and, and to continue on and do some of the things that I need to do, you know. I've been laboring to put together a scholarship fund, you 
you know, to be able to uh, give, send our guys through school, you know, my sons in the faith. Uh, they don't, most people don't have jobs there. Most, most of them just don't have jobs. There's not enough jobs to go around. So they, they just walk around trying to find, can I sweep your yard? Can I clean your house? Can I, you know, carry some limbs off? Can I carry a bag of cement? That's how most people live, just, just a little bit at a time, you know. And so only the ones with skills get jobs. So I, I've been trying, you know, with, out of my own money to send them to school, you know, and uh, to learn different skills. And, uh, and uh, I knew that when, when the financial hard times hit, that was going to be harder for me to do out of my own pocket. So I tried to put together the scholarship fund, you know. And uh, anyway, God... God sent some help. <laughs> so, does anybody have any questions? Any thoughts? Can I pray for anybody or anything at all? We'll pray for you for what you're doing with the Word. I wish you would. We need to pray for you. This safe trip and the, the God and work that you're doing. Brock, you will have nothing to say. Go down and pray. I wish you would. I tell you for sure. <laughs> Let's give you back what you've been turning. Amen. It's just amazing to watch, you know. Amazing to watch God at work, you know. Trying to put things together and it doesn't seem to come together, but all of a sudden God just speaks and so totally surprised you. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. God is so good. So how do they handle it? Yeah, crazy.
know, I meant to, I meant to bring uh, 